to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. So I guess this is technically 116, although we said 116 in our last episode because we were expecting to record a 115. So this is actually 116. 116. 116. We're here. It's Human Factors Cast. Today is January 14th, 2019. We're back. You're watching, maybe listening to uh, Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome. I'm joined today by Blake Arnsdorf. Holly, Holly. How are you guys? Hey, there he is. Hey, so uh, Blake, we've been gone for a hot minute. A long time. <laughs> it's, it's been like a month. It's been exactly a month since we've sat in, in this studio and recorded something together. It's kind of freaking me out. I like uh, being back, though. I, I do, too. So to, to cue in all of our listeners, we actually had a uh, we, we had plans to not make this hiatus as long as it was on your end. Uh, one thing led to another delayed flights, uh, sickness, uh, family emergencies, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Lots of things amalgamating, and we're here a month later. Yeah, we are here. Human Factors cast. We're here. We're back. Uh, and, and don't worry, folks. We're here to stay. So uh, we are back on our regular schedule. Um, you'll get a Human Factors cast infinite episode tonight as well. We are we are back in force, Blake. 2019, here we come. Yeah. Big things coming. Hey, I got to ask you, though. How, how'd your uh, 2018 wrap up? Okay. It was fantastic. It wrapped up with a really long flight across the country into Ireland afterwards. But other than that, it was great. Great. Yeah. Uh, How my, about you? Mine was not so happy. We had a family emergency. Oh, goodness. Um, there was a, a family member uh, went to the hospital after 20 minutes without oxygen. Oh, my um, goodness. Was in a coma and is now doing way better than I anticipated for 20 minutes without oxygen. Sure. That's a big um, time. So, yeah, that's a long time. But now they're talking uh, and, and kind of exhibiting signs of dementia. But... Um, for for what it was, I mean that's that's a huge improvement. Oh yeah, I mean twenty minutes without oxygen because that's like a lot of people think about not oxygen to the body, but not oxygen to the brain has a big yeah, impact. Yeah, has on a it. huge one. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's amazing. Yeah. So uh, continuing to monitor progress and and that's well, I, I got a ton of banter to talk about though. We're not going to get into it in this show. Um, I'll talk about some of it in our infinite episode tonight, and definitely some next week. Uh, just a s- little sneak peek. I got a dash cam, so there's going to be footage. Oh, that's right. I saw that on Slack. <laughs> that you got it's, a dash cam. I did. Okay, so uh, just a quick couple programming notes. We are here. We're on YouTube. Um, we, we're back. So, uh, you know, th- I hope you had uh, time to catch up on our HFES 2018 coverage over the holidays. We kind of thought that because we dropped so much stuff in October that that would be a perfect time to catch up on that. Um but yeah, we're back. We're here. Better than ever. There is stuff this year, though. There's the healthcare symposium, which we may go to. We're still working that out. Trying to get the details ironed. Yeah, we, we might go to that. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We Either, either way, we will have coverage. Oh, uh, most definitely. Yeah, so, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, there's also IEEE and Kai coming up as well. So, uh, And then, of course, HFES this year. So, so lots of fun things to look forward to. Um, actually, Brian just reached out on our Slack, too. He says uh, UXPA Boston just put out their call for papers. So we'll likely uh, try to snag him again for some coverage. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, lots of fun stuff. And if you have a conference happening near you or if you're going to one that we're not covering, please reach out to us. We're happy to have you on the show to talk about your experience and and uh, just get some some idea of what going to that conference is like. But, Blake, you and I are here to wrap up our coverage of 2018 st- all news stories, our kind of annual tradition. Um, and so with that, I think we're going to do away with the predictions this year, unless you have some. I don't, I ha- don't have any off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll come to the table next week. I don't know. The, TBD. The government will not be shut uh, down sometime. Yeah. yeah that's um, about it. Oh, that's, that's some banter I could talk about on Infinite 2, yep. man. That's all, there's a uh, lot to dive in there because there's human factors issues that come up with this entire shutdown that I think would yeah. be fun to talk about. Let me just cue our listeners in. I am flying tomorrow, and I am... That's right. Yeah, we had this conversation in the office. I am more afraid than I've ever been to fly. I've, I'm not typically afraid to fly. Well, you're a bigger man than I am. Take off and landing, afraid. I kind of tense up because I know that's where all the stuff happens. But, yeah. I mean, you know, like flying, the process is fine. Whatever. I get a little... Uh, yeah this anyway we'll talk more about that on internet okay so we are uh i guess you know what we can do is we can do this little dropper Hit thing with the sweet sounds yeah it's uh all the human factors news from 2018 last time we uh wrapped up around june 30th so or 
Yeah, June thirtieth. So I guess we're gonna pick up uh, this this next uh, July first. Yeah, that's the next date. July one. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will. St- uh, wait. Do you want to start us off and then I'll go? Yeah, you start us off. Go. All right. So new analysis shows how Facebook and Google push users into sharing personal data. This was a big theme of the entire year, right? is we're having these dark patterns that are forcing you to share your personal data with these services. Right, yeah. I, I, I can't remember much from what we talked about last time or even what happened last year, but yes, I do remember that being a theme. Uh, hey, there's a new system that connects your mind to a machine to help stop mistakes. Finally. Yeah. Maybe I'll get things right for once. Do you remember this one? This one was kind of cool where it basically... Uh, what kind of mistakes was it stopping? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but, oh, wait. It was like some sort of brain waves that would stop a machine from doing something if it sensed the user was like in the vicinity or something like that. It was judging it. Like if you said, "Oh, don't do that," the machine would stop doing what it's doing. Like, oh, yeah. Sorry, I don't know. All right. So up next, twelve fast rising technologies to get ready for. What were those twelve? I don't remember what these (laughs) twelve were, uh, but that certainly was the title. I feel like that had a lot to do, and this might have played into my predictions. Uh, Blockchain, voice search, personalized medicine, three D printing, new digital banking, five G network, Internet of Things, everything, tokenization. All the way up to July, I was still banking on that blockchain was going to do something for me. Artificial personal assistance, quantum computing, last mile transportation, and social media streaming. I do remember this article. That was a great one to talk through uh, from July 4th. Uh, okay, so, hey, your face will be your passport. Uh, Contus passengers start using biometrics. Yeah. So that was another big theme of 2018 is you got to start seeing biometrics kind of everywhere, people kind of implementing this in public places now. Which, funny enough, I mean, that was going to play a lot into the airport experience. Like, yeah. From scanning you as soon as you walk in to you not really having to even interact with anybody. You just go through and get on your plane. Man, I wish that was in place for tomorrow. Ooh, man. Ooh. Uh, all right. So Virgin wanted to launch space tourism flights from an Italian spaceport. So this was kind of their segue into let's get this space flight travel going where we can get the masses into space. Yeah. And then uh, Elon Musk's sponsor came along and said, Oh, hey, SpaceX, we're going to space. Yep. (laughs) Uh, Let's see here. Facebook Independent Research Commission Social Science 1 will share a petabyte of user interactions. Of course they would. This was cool because uh, a lot of data being blasted out to people. stolen from us at all times. Yeah, I love it. No, I'm just kidding. So technology and healthcare is moving from mainframes to iPhones. Yeah, this was like a lot talking about like what we went through most of the year was talking about how tracking your basically fitness data or your just basic heart data could be transferred right. to doctors and stuff like that. And there was plenty of iPhone apps that we went through during the year that were kind of aiding doctors in doing their job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, more banter. More banter. More banter for the infinite episode. So much banter. Uh, Facebook tested augmented reality ads in their news feed. Did you ever see these? I, so I don't go on Facebook, so I didn't see it. Okay, so uh, there are other places you can see these, Blake. The 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 gist of it is that you tilt your phone and it's like three D, uh, like pictures. Oh, so it's like respond. parallax almost. Yeah, they respond to the uh, gyroscopic movement phone. of your yeah. Oh, see so when I see when I see augmented reality, I think it's like putting me in like a clothing item and how good I would look in it. Oh, you know Something what? It, like this. That. Oh no, you're right. This was the sunglasses. Got them. Yeah. I mean, I'm, go I'm full on of Facebook it. and I know. I'm full of it. That's it's, hilarious. It's been a month and I don't know how to podcast anymore. Uh, All right. That was a bunch of months ago. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so Walmart patent surveillance tool that could eavesdrop on its workers. I do remember so this our, one. Our, a big time into Big Brother and Walmart's kicking it off for us. Do you remember this one, Blake? Flying trains could be coming your way. <laughs> I remember thinking this title was insane. It, it was a dumb title, but the... The, the reality uh, of it was pretty The gist cool. of it is you have this capsule on a train and then it unloads and the this plane uh chassis comes and picks it up and then takes off and drops you in midair that was our concern if is anybody does not mechanical? know this is coming off a of nick top of nick's head this is not scripted i don't remember that at all but that's that's pretty intense man i can't believe you remember all that yeah what's all up next all right deep mind so elon musk and more pledge not to make autonomous AI weapons. So this came in as well when we talked a couple weeks ago, well, a couple months ago now, probably about Google's Dragonfly project, right. among other ones. So yeah, that, that was a big topic of the year as well, is what are you going to do when AI gets to a certain degree? 
Hey, VR uh, practitioners put forward a uh, VR standard that promised to end headset connector headaches because every single VR headset has a different um, connector. Oh, I thought it was literal headaches, but this is just a, a figurative thing. Yeah. So Senate wants emergency alerts to go out through Netflix, Spotify, ETC, which... At the time, I thought it kind of made sense, right? Because I don't know. I don't have cable. I don't watch anything right. like that. And I still think it makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. And I think my, I think the biggest one for me was like, it, it'll probably come through my phone, but what if I don't have my phone near me type of right. thing? So it's yeah. a cool idea. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Facebook, Google, and more unite to let you transfer your data between apps. This was cool. Yeah. You got user freedom and how you use your data. It, yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of a squishy one, right? <laughs> right. Man, user data. 2018, the year of user data. Yeah, I wonder how that'll change in the overcoming year. So, all right, DARPA pushed for AI that can explain its own decisions. So this is like taking, you know, <laughs> decision-making tools to another level, trying to actually explain why it made a decision, which is really important when it comes to any kind of AI or autonomous system. Yeah. The ethics of computer science. This research had a controversial proposal, and I don't even remember what it was. What was their proposal? <laughs> they proposed something this, controversial? I mean, this was in nature. So uh, I, I believe this was the... Um, uh, bu- 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 I'm looking here. I'm skimming. The proposal was... It's kind of like the future of computing in general? Yeah. Like where this is going to go as a science? Let's see here. Uh... This was like the proposal to reject papers with negative impacts. That's weird. Yeah. Like like with it, negative impacts? It's it's the one that if if research is found and uh, to have a widely um a, a, a wide impact on society in a negative way, then don't publish it. Oh. I don't even remember this one at all. No, that's crazy. Well, because yeah. in my head, it's like you still publish it, but you emphasize the negative impact that it has in the paper. And I know at some point we talked a little bit about that, like a lot of, you know, scientists pushing to at the end of papers where you put like the limitations or the future results. You'd also put consequences as in yeah. negative ones. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of pushing for the unintended consequences or uses of the technology in these papers. I, I don't know. It was an interesting, interesting paper. That's all I remember of it. But uh uh, all right, what's up next, Blake? All good. So helping computers perceive human emotions. So what did this really entail? This is something from MIT it looked like. So the subtitle was personalized machine learning modules capture subtle variations in facial expressions to better gauge how we feel. So it's basically trying to learn more about human emotion through facial recognition. There's a lot you can do with that, too. Like if you think about this in a healthcare setting. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could get like pain readings from just yeah. a camera in the room yeah exactly and alert nurses a lot of cool applications uh national institute of health partners with google cloud to speed up medical breakthroughs which was cool because that was a big computing power problem and sharing data sets which yeah. I, I never really thought about but that makes sense that, that was an issue uh so new study finds it's hard to turn off a robot when it's begging for its <laughs> life that yeah i remember that one that, that had some scary imagery to it did you know, uh, this was one of the ones that you were out, actually. I talked with Woodrow on this one. More than half of drivers don't look for cyclists and pedestrians before turning right. Really? Yeah. Fun fact. That's not good. Yeah. No wonder people get well, hit. So, yeah. So, so the gist of this one was that as you're looking to the left, um, so there's two things. One, uh, it's the, the uh, cyclists that are on your same trajectory, on your right behind you there's that and then there's also the one like you're looking for bigger objects as they come from left to right if you're making a right turn that makes sense. you're not looking for smaller objects like cyclists and so you're more likely to hit them that yeah i could see that that's it that's pretty intense Ooh. Said. all right so stress makes people better at processing bad news i can see it yeah i guess that makes sense really i feel like that would have the opposite effect in my head what kind of stress we got here? I, I have a feeling it's very much a uh, diminishing returns. Uh, uh, I don't remember what the stress was. It's just like things can't get any worse. Yeah. You hear this bad news. It's just like, it's like uh, oh, great. Well, yeah. It's not any What worse. else is new? It's about here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember this one? This one is a really sad story. The stolen plane um, up at SeaTac no. Airport. The, the, pi- the, um, the guy who went for a joyride. Oh, no, I definitely don't remember. Yeah, you don't remember. I mean, I don't. You were not on this episode, but you sh- 
you should remember this one. It was the guy um, who had mental health issues, and um, he just snagged a plane. He snagged a plane and went for a joyride. There's a ton of footage of it, um, and I think I think this was actually like our second episode of uh, that that we like had video for. So uh, you should go back and watch that. Wow, man, that's nuts. All right, so employer expectations on off-hour emails. New study shows adverse health effects on workers and families. So, yeah, this was that expectation that when you're out of the office, you're still on in terms of, like, checking right. your email, doing a little bit of work, and it can Guilty. affect your personal life and your emotional life. And we talk, we both talked about that, shared some personal stories. Guilty. But, I mean, I, I will say I've gotten a lot better over the holidays. It's been very easy to just shut that thing off. Oh, it's been so good. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. In trouble now, but been so good. Oh, I know. Uh, it's like Nick's over here going, hey, Blake, we need to, we need to film an episode. Uh <laughs> RPI scientist. What is that? RPI. What is that? Uh, virtual reality surgery to feel real. Huh. Well, that's pretty I cool. Don't, I don't remember any of these stories. And these were some you of our more the recent. the RPI one? Yeah. This, yeah, this was, I mean, I think this was kind of misleading because it wasn't using, you know, what am I trying to say? What are you trying to say? It was only using visuals to make something seem more realistic. So oh, sure. this is right. Okay, yeah. I, I remember now. I remember now. Yeah, we're good. Good. All right. So Los Angeles is the first in the U.S. to install subway body scanners. That's right. Yeah, because we were all hot and bothered by all this biometrics coming, and then it was here. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't really know what the outcome of that was. I don't either. And I, I want to. I want to know. I want to yeah. get on a subway and see what my body scan looks like. Or, but the fact is, they actually don't tell you. They just have signs up for it. Or yeah. Something like that. Exactly. Coolness. Uh, let's see here. This robot maintains tender, unnerving eye contact. Oh, uh, did not like that one. I don't remember the context of this one. I definitely remember some video of it. Yep. I remember like the it. video. Okay. Yep. 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 I see it. Yeah. And, uh, the, the idea is that if it makes eye contact with you, it, you'll be more empathetic towards it. Right. Yeah. Which is the case, but it's a little bit creepy. All right. So 63 startups that launched at Y Combinator. So this was during the S 18 demo of day one. And th- this had to do with everything in its mom, right? We had everything from, like, public recreation to, like, actual bioscience and then do- going through autonomous trucks. There was a lot of different startups that were coming around at the time. Sure. Yeah, and I can't I- remember the ones that we picked. I don't either. Um, but I, I do recognize some of these uh, people... Well, not, not these companies maybe show up. It's kind of funny. There's like a lot of bioscience stuff from food yeah. to even like, you know, in the hospital type of stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's next? That's me. I'm next. I'm going to read Fusion, a collaborative robotic telepresence parasite that lives on your back. This one was such a cool one. Do you not remember this one? It was a, it was a basically like a telepresence robot with arms that attached to a backpack. So you had the backpack and there's a guy... There's, there's like a camera over your shoulder. And then so like let's say you wanted remote instruction. You have a pair of arms that could literally take your arms and show you how to play the piano. This note, this note, this note. Or um, they could do the task in front of you with their robotic arms uh, looking over looking over your shoulder with the camera. And then you could re- recreate Oh, the you'd task. be able to mimic it yeah. from just seeing it. That's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. All right, so your brain tries to focus four times per second. A study finds that is alarming. That's a lot of se- that's a lot of times a second. It's a lot of focusing. It's a lot of times a minute. Yeah, you're yeah. using up a lot of mental energy just to focus on something. And I bet you it's more exacerbated than that with smartphone use. I bet you it is. Uh, Colorado prepares to install smart road product uh, by integrated roadways. Oh yeah, this was like the smart pavement. That was going to help people like monitor what was going on in the roadways and kind of report both to, you know, the city council as well as right. I think like air or traffic in general to police in the area. Yeah, certainly cool stuff. Yep. So scientists only able to reproduce results for thirteen out of twenty one behavioral studies. Oof, oh, that's man. a tough one to swallow. Yeah, there's been a few of those coming up in the media recently too. Have you heard about that with the papers that were published that weren't actually real papers? Enlighten us. Oh man. I'm not going to go into the gory details of it, but there was a couple of scientists who were who saw like a trend in a- academia where there was only certain types of science getting through. And mm-hmm. so they basically went and did fake research and it was published in some very notable magazines or notable journals um, related to like, you know, I'm not even going to go into a couple of them because a couple of them are pretty lewd. 
but it's it's kind of been interesting because now they've gone out and they've told like different news organizations that these were based off of nothing and they made it through peer-reviewed journals right um so it's been a whole bunch of stuff so now like there's even th- their institutions are trying to get them fired and all mm-hmm. sorts of stuff so well that's fun that's yeah nice optimistic note uh yeah, peer reviewed is scary on, on, on a truly optimistic note what do we uh, got visually impaired can navigate easily with deep way yes they can yeah I actually had a visual impaired banter story today, but I'll save oh, that. Yeah, save it for next week. Yep. Or or uh, Infinite. Oh, yep, Infinite might be a really yeah. fun one. Yeah, we're plugging a lot of Infinite tonight, yeah. but I'm okay with that. Yeah, it just is what it is, Nick. All right, so this one was a pretty serious header. It's Hold up. Before oh. you do that, I can't have done any better of a segue. We'll be back right after this. Human Factors Cast strives to bring you the best in Human Factors chatter every week. We pack news, interviews, reviews, and overall fun conversations into each and every product that we put our seal of approval on. But we can't do it without you. You see, the Human Factors Cast network is 100% listener supported. All the funds that go into running this show come from the listeners. That's why we're giving back to our supporters on Patreon, now more than ever. Pledges start at just $1 per month and include rewards like 24-7 access to our exclusive Human Factors Cast Slack channel, personalized professional reviews, and Human Factors Cast Infinite, a Patreon-only podcast where the topic is human factors, etc. We're always updating our rewards, so stop by patreon.com slash humanfactorscast to see what support level may be right for you. Thank you all, and remember, it depends. Okay, I just had to take a, a advantage of that opportunity because that was the ultimate transition. Okay, what's what's the next Couldn't one? Better. Okay, right. robotic implants. So I didn't really remember what this one was. So to re- refresh my memory a little about the article, but this was talking about the Forker technique. How basically surgeons have to go into children that need some rare that need oh, some right. lung defect replacements, and they have to do it multiple times because these suture elements have to grow in the lung so basically what this postdoc came up with is that there could be a robotic implant that would grow over time so you don't have to do one surgery versus maybe like five Uh, so that was a sweet that's right i do remember that uh i also remember google wanting to kill the url um they haven't done it yet they haven't done it but they certainly set foot out to do so it's coming i already know it and then we had this hyper real robot that will cry and bleed on med students (laughs) This was cool. Okay, so this is cool only in the context of, well, it's cool before looking at it in the context, but also in the context of looking at this with the lens that we've talked to people from HFES, Adam Brawley, who was doing this type of work and and also, um, oh, I'm I'm blanking on the name, but there were a couple of others that were working on this type of technology where uh, they're they're just trying to make the realism of the... uh, of the, of the medical environment. Trying to up the fidelity of yes, these things. Yes, that's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Man, words are hard after not doing this for a month. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so first, or this was a world first in decision-making AI. So this came from, what, in New Zealand, it looks like. So let's take a look here. I can't quite remember what this world first was. I, I do remember you and I having a little bit of controversy back and forth about was this really a world first or not. Oh, yes, that's right. I do remember that. Yeah, so the work it is really based. wasn't. Yeah, no, it def. I don't think it definitely was. It was making a differentiation between being able to differentiate between you know visual images and then things that were recorded from the brain, and which decision you would make based off what you'd seen previously or your own kind of habits or likes. So it was, we thought it might be good for you know tar- <laughs> ad targeting, of course, but it, I don't know this was a world first, but no, certainly not. And I just realized something for my OCD and for our listeners there are some of you out there that will go wait Blake just went twice maybe he did now it's Nick's turn to go twice do it that way we're back on the same schedule do it all right so we also had humanity uh, that launched uh, app to give consumers legal control over medical data thank goodness so again it's it's all about this at least perception of giving users their data right and and giving them the freedom I, I think there was a lot of movements this year or last year to try to get that data in the hands of the consumers um, and to give it back a little bit, or at least to get it out there that there was a problem. Right. I don't know how well it's been executed on. Right. Yeah. uh, Apple's new watch. They can sense falls and heart irregularities. This is cool because we saw, we saw almost the direct 
Uh, this is almost a direct result from probably some of the research that we covered on the show years ago, right? Yeah. Where where, where uh, they were looking at heart rate signatures and yeah, everything they were able to per, detect something. They were like they could per- predict your mortality, and they could also predict heart ac- or cardiac arrest or cardiac failure and that kind of stuff. That's pretty nuts. All right, you're up. Oh, is it me? Yeah. All right. SpaceX announces plan to. SpaceX announces plan to announce plan to <laughs> send <laughs> someone around the moon in a planned spaceship. Oh man! So they did a lot of planning. Yeah, they did. To I send somebody around the moon. Oh, I don't remember what this uh, billionaire's name was, but I do remember you and I. We, Did we um, watch this. We watched this live on Infinite, and, and kind he's going to take a bunch of like different artists and stuff like that out. Yeah, they're going to take a bunch of artists out to the moon, which is really cool uh, because those are. I mean, can you imagine the the types of art that will come from this? I, I my I my bet's still on Katy Perry. She's going to go out there. She's going to write oh, a song about the moon, and it'll be the best song ever. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I'm up. I'm up. Yeah, oh, it's you. See, I'm I'm losing it. All right. DARPA wants brain interfaces for able-bodied warfighters. Love uh, it. Yeah, me too. Do I love it. it. I, there's not much more we can say. Yep. Yes. Uh, there's not a whole lot we can say about this next one. So are we? Are digital devices altering our brains? Definitively, yes. 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 And we'll continue. Uh, Walmart is putting 17,000 Oculus Go headsets in its stores to help train employees in VR. I always remember the stories that we use as our thumbnails because the thumbnails are always so ridiculous. They are. They're a little bit out, <laughs> very outlandish. It's this guy going, it's like with the with the hands, he's just explaining something in his Walmart. And yeah, I just remember that thumbnail so vividly. It's funny. They've got, you know, cameras and they're eavesdropping on their employees while they play VR. Yeah, I, I do think this is cool, though, because you get... Uh, the idea of being able to train people before the thing is in the store. And it's nice because it's uh, it's at a big market chain store where there's going to be yeah. a lot of people having to use it. So it's it's pretty fun. And the more we see that, I think the better we're going to have like VR applications everywhere. Yep. Right. Oh, this next one will ease my fears about flying tomorrow. Yeah. this I don't even want to read this one. So airline passengers bleed from the ears and nose after a crew forgets to pressurize the cabin. You know, every time I got on a flight for the holidays, I was just freaking out that they weren't going to pressurize the cabin. Ugh. Absolutely. It was horrible. Oh. Yeah, there's one time I actually convinced myself they hadn't, and I was really freaking out. I anyway. remember I remember that one was right before we got on the plane to HFES. Yep. That was, yep. Terrifying. Woo. All right. Uh, California bans default passwords on any internet connected device. That's so that's cool because a lot of these um, a, a lot of different technologies come with a default password that if you know the default password for that line, you can pretty much get into it. Or if you know the schema, you can guess it. Yeah, the sch- you enlightened me to the schema part. I didn't even think about that as a real problem, but definitely right. a good move on California's part. I uh, I want to mention one other thing. Did you see that California banned the ability to use gender as a determining method for your uh, car insurance rates? I didn't so, know they did that before. Yeah, so young males uh, who typically engage in more risky behavior on the road. Yep. Oh, yeah, I remember my mom always complaining about that. Yeah. Your insurance is through the roof. Yeah, because you're a young male, insurance through the roof. Now they can no longer say that. So I wonder what other differentiating factor that's still accounting for the fact that you may or may not be a young male is in influencing that, but it's not called gender. That's just my yeah. soapbox anyway. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I'd be curious to dig more about that, dig in more about that. Speaking of transportation, so the U- U.S. Department of Transportation updated autonomous car rules. We saw a lot of this throughout the entire year, and this was only a couple months ago, so this might have been the final story we had. But it, it was getting at everything from, you know, does there have to be a steering wheel in here to testing regulations. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Uh, introducing an intelligent intersection. I remember this because everything was communicating with each other. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty epic. So, so here we go. TSA re- releases roadmap to expand biometric technology. Now, we know that's on hold at the moment. But, yeah, I mean, from face scanners to, you know, being able to just walk in the airport and not even have to necessarily check your bag in. Yeah. With, that'd a, be so with cool. an agent. Oh, that'd be really nice. One day. Uh, the Boring Company's L.A. test tunnel is almost complete. So this actually happened last month um, in December. And this happened right after our, our last show of the year wrapped up. 
Um, I actually did not get a chance to do this. However, I did hear reports uh, from others that went, and it was not that great. So, hold up. Winner. Hold up. Hold up. I have to talk about this one. We have to dig into this we one not, a little bit. We didn't watch this? We didn't watch this one. This was, we this, watched something this, about the boring deal. We did. We watched like the, uh, the, the video that he had, the concept video. Yeah. Now, here's, here's, here's where this gets interesting. So Uh-oh. you would think that he made a track and there's like this cart that, you know, a car parks on the cart and locks in and then it transports you at 100 something miles per hour, right? That was the concept. That yeah. was the concept. It's you know what ended a, up actually happening? It's just a tunnel. They mounted a car with uh, additional side rail reels and drove through it at like 70 miles per hour. And apparently it was really bumpy and really uh, didn't feel that great. So, wow. uh, yeah, I don't know if it was just to show off the tunnel or what. Probably. But, uh, yeah. Just, something didn't come across from concept yeah, to for sure. realization. Yeah. I mean, you know, with all the stuff that, I don't know, I feel like there's been a explosion of interviews with him. And it's every time his, his big thing is, and granted, the guy does some pretty amazing oh, stuff. Oh, sure. He's yeah. like, you know, I work 120 hours a week, so I have no idea how he's managing however many companies he actually has. SpaceX, Boring. Neu- uh, one of the, whatever the one is between like linking the brain and oh Neuralink is it Neuralink I think so yeah so like trying to manage deadlines for those three companies plus like the boring company was from what I heard on various podcasts right was just kind of a let's do it for kicks sure and it's gotten a lot a lot bigger hype than I think was it was ready for so that didn't surprise me for some reason it's disappointing yeah it's really disappointing I was really disappointed to watch some of the reports coming out of that man. Uh yeah, you're up. All right. So astronaut or NASA astronaut describes one close call following a failed launch. So that was kind of disturbing, right? Cuz we've I, we haven't necessarily gone through them, but there's been a lot of issues with launches from NASA rockets or just rockets in general over the like past decade and so to hear this description of it was a little frightening. Right. Uh let's see here. People want self-driving cars to prioritize young lives over the elderly. So <laughs> this was predictable, I guess. The trolley problem. All yeah, over it's again. the trolley problem. Uh, but the the cool thing is now that there's this, all this research about it. There is, and it's. I think it's good for people to understand that you in that it's a central problem to autonomous cars and AI and cars and all that stuff. So it's good to know, be out there and about there. Yep. All right. So the impact of politics on workplace productivity. This was kind of a interesting study that I really wouldn't have expected that it would have much impact on productivity, but it is a big thing in people's lives. Right. For sure, especially when you're uh, a government employee and their government's been shut down for three weeks. Yeah, so it's it's definitely had a, a change in the <laughs> in meaning since October for sure. Ugh, yeah. That's just I'm sorry, my heart goes out to you if you're a government employee in the US uh it's still working during this shutdown. I'm I'm really sorry. Thanks to you if you are. Uh, yeah, huge shout out. Yeah, massive appreciation. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here's three ways to avoid bias in machine learning, and I'm going to go over them right now. Yeah, they were pretty uh, good, if I remember right. Uh, let's see here. Had a lot to do with the data, if I remember right. Yeah, you got to choose the right learning model for the problem. You got to choose a representative training data set, and you got to monitor performance using real data. Excellent. Couldn't have said it better myself. Three short rules. <laughs> so Chinese gate recognition tech IDs people by how they walk. This was insane. I thought this was really cool. I, I feel like this has a lot of merit in, you know, something like the airport. Yeah, or like biometrics. Yeah, if you if you look at just use a camera and they can identify a person all the way through the airport. I really didn't think that that would be possible. But the way they broke it down in the article, it really it started to make a whole lot more sense. <clears throat> yeah. Um, this was a sad story. Uh, yeah, it was. These two tech founders lost their friends in tragic accidents, and now they've built an AI chatbot to give people life after death. And didn't we? Uh, we yes. actually did the. We did an Black infinite Mirror episode or something. Yeah, there's yeah. a Black Mirror episode about this, which we can. Dang man, there's so much good banter. We could talk about banter snatch and everything. Oh, that's right. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, uh, we can talk about that in infinite. We'll, we'll just add it to the list. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but the, yeah, the, they essentially created personas of their dead friends and ha, um, had these chatbots interact with them as if they were that person. Yeah, we talked a lot about the the feelings and ethics of that in that specific episode too. Yeah. All right. So VR 
Virtual reality could transform prototyping. I really like this because I want to be just, you know, making prototypes. So whether it's physical or digital objects in my office with VR. I'm yeah. do that than play with my physical mouse and keyboard anymore. I know. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, forget VR treadmills. Google. I wouldn't even think about them. <laughs> Google patents motorized omnidirectional VR sneakers. Thank goodness. And I thought these were so cool. These you are did. really cool. Yeah, they were pretty sweet. And ah. if uh, if they end up working out. Yeah, send them to Human Factors yeah. Cast. We'd love to review them. All right, so world's first research center to improve Canadians' air travel experience. So this was super awesome. I mean, I can't even imagine the impact that the Canadian government can have by improving its travel experience, not just for you know its own inside domestic population, but especially people that come and visit. Right. Having that good experience in the airport makes it that much easier to want to travel somewhere. The thing that was striking to me is that they included the entire duration of the trip. They, they From the moment you step into the airport, uh, or even before that, but to the moment that you step out of the airport and into your taxi or whatever on the other end. Yeah, it seemed like they had done a really good job mapping out and all the processes. Yeah, it's pretty comprehensive. Um, brain implant lets paralyze people turn thoughts into text. This was really cool because... Now people who previously couldn't, unless you're Stephen Hawking, who, you know, had this specialized equipment that measured uh, cheek twitches, this will allow um, paralyzed individuals to text. Yeah, to interact which with is, not even only each other, but people that they love, right? Right, and you got to imagine, like, this is giving somebody their voice back. Yeah, and allowing you to, like, think out loud again. Yeah. Right? It's very intense. All right, so f- the f- we had a lot of... Articles that said world the first. first, global first, the glo- the first global drone standards have been revealed. Oh man, that was something chaotic going on in the UK when I oh went Glasgow, there. yeah, that was insane. Like, the, is that where you flew whole, into? No, I didn't. I went into just Dublin itself, but everybody was like complaining about how they couldn't pick up some of their relatives or that flights were getting canceled. And all did sorts that of happen stuff. that weekend that you flew? Yeah. That oh was wow. The weekend I flew there. And I had no idea, of course. I got off the plane, and I thought I was on another planet because it was, you know, eight hours ahead. Sure. Yeah. But, yeah, it was pretty intense. So uh, hopefully those these kind of standards start to help with those problems because, if I remember right, people were, you know, wrongfully accused of it and actually held right. for a long time. Yeah. Uh, a plane flies 29 miles past Australian destination after pilot falls asleep so now we're getting into those like last couple stories that we tackled throughout the year yeah they're fairly recent we can still chat about them in the context of 2019 what we know now so <laughs> i'm i am going to change my mind and make a prediction that walmart is going to have the most tech inside of their stores because we've oh. heard, had like three walmart stories in this last half that are all about like putting eavesdropping equipment vr and now we're going to put you know robot janitors are coming to mop the floors at a walmart near you okay so so okay write that down because i want to come back to it one day i know someday you're going to get a pen and paper here yeah and, i don't like pens and papers here. uh okay okay so how are we going to objectively measure this by the number of walmart stories that we cover over the year yes are you going to say like no, well, i'm going to go to walmart headquarters and be like how much tech do you actually have oh you're gonna ask him just in person yeah. you're gonna go okay mr walmart and then, and then how are you gonna compare are you gonna go up to the target too and are you gonna no i'll just ask them th- for a biased report okay they do it on themselves I'm, okay all right okay sounds sounds legit sounds okay. sounds legit great we'll use that for your 2019 prediction thank goodness uh you are up next my friend again i just did the janitors oh the robot janitors did yeah, you just say that okay. i did oh man I'm paying attention. <laughs> we are Google employees. Google must drop Dragonfly. So this was again um, the the issue of uh, the the wartime. What what was this? This is like AI. No, I think this had to do with China, the Chinese government wanting Google to build it a specific software engine that they could monitor people much more closely. That's what it was. I knew it had something to do with foreign uh, governments. Okay. Again, all right, so 6.4 million children in the U.S. have ADHD. I'm sure I was one of them. This company wants doctors to treat them with video games. Yeah. We both found, if I remember right, we both found this kind of controversial in some ways. Yes. It sounded like a cool idea in theory. Show me what the curriculum is and show me how the game improves performance. Yeah, I wanted to see the impact. Yeah, Yeah, it was uh, very much a a thing. This is my favorite story of 2018. I don't even think we talked about this one, so we can actually flat out talk about this one because we posted this. With all intents to actually like talk about it, well, so we can we can talk we about not talk about it. Well, because this we posted after our last show recorded, 
um, but before they aired. And so we can kind of talk about this right now. Um, real time. Real time. This is this is not the, the blurb isn't prepared or anything. We can kind of just read the article here. This is uh, this is from uh, Quartz. And uh, Taylor Swift used facial recognition to track her stalkers at a concert uh, by Dave Gershgorn. This was uh, published on October 12th. Again, this is from Quartz. December so, 12th. Uh, yeah, we can, we can read the article here. But basically, the gist of it is that um, they, they put in this, this kiosk uh, that recorded faces of um, concert goers onlookers uh that went to this concert and this command post in nashville tennessee uh kind of attempted to match those images to hundreds of images of known taylor swift stalkers let's go through that one more time so hundreds of known (laughs) images of taylor swift stalkers that's pretty intense yeah no no wonder you would need this yeah no kidding because i was kind of i i'll be honest with you i was kind of frowning a little bit that the fact that it says this was secretly done but if she's got that many stalkers or there's you know a a list of hundreds i would say she probably needs to be quite careful look if it's secretly done and they genuinely do no other information they do nothing with the information gathered from that device other than database match it with stalkers i see nothing wrong with it sure the problem arises when because it's for the performer's safety oh yeah i get that i get that the problem is that if they do anything else with this data um, i.e. start creating databases of all the people that go to concerts and potentially, you know, if any one of those people caused a problem, they could match them up to that database and then use that data further. You know, there's there's other implications from that that I think. Yeah. Uh, if you go to a certain artist concert, somebody else doesn't let you into their concert. Yeah. I could see how that happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, let's see here. Let's get some comments here. Everybody who went by would stop and stare at it, the kiosk. And the stop the software would start working. So this was this was also facially activated. Oh wow! So it's not it's that's kind of cool. It's not running all the time, but just if it catches a face, I yeah. feel like that have to be pretty poignant to be able to you know quickly hit the markers it needs to know that it is a face, pull the information, capture it, and hide it away. Yeah, the, uh, pretty the, good software. One of the real questions here is that we don't know still even if it identified any real stalkers or you know if it if it even worked yeah uh, or what happened when they were identified so it's just a flashy um, headline to be honest but yeah. who knows yeah who knows maybe these stalkers just shook it off wow <laughs> i just don't even know what to do with i don't you. know you anymore that's how we round you're up breaking, 2018 you're breaking my heart <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> all right well let's see if Taylor we can Swift get jokes yeah let's see if we can get this outro to play uh there it is hey yeah, all right uh, well, that's it for today, everyone. Let us know what you guys think of all the stories from 2018. Uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, please stay tuned for the after show. We are going to hit you hard and fast with this one this week. I promise. Indeed. Uh, for the rest of you, you can join the discussion on our Slack or follow us any, anywhere on our social media channels, uh, H-Factors Podcast. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, you can leave us a review on your podcast medium of choice or consider joining us on uh, Patreon. And, of course, you can always reach us at our home on the web, humanfactorscast.com. I want to thank Blake Arnstorff for rounding out 2018 and a solid start to 2019. Where can our listeners go and find you? Guys, I would... If they want the bad blood. If they want the bad blood? Well, I would love it if you guys would hit me up at Don't Panic UX on Twitter and let me know your favorite Taylor Swift line. Excellent. Special thanks to Jeff Olson for our video editing each and every week. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me across social media at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Until next time... It depends. It depends. I wonder if you know Trey or not. Hey, Blake. Hey, Nick. You belong with me. Thank goodness. Podcasting.